So, you're going on a journey to a black hole. Well, you'll need a lot of provisions, because the nearest black hole is 1,011 light-years away. This black pearl was found in the solar system called HR 6819. It was hidden in orbit with two other stars, which you can see with the human eye. Scientists have been studying this system since the 80s, but this winter, it revealed its main secret. This particular black hole is considered relatively small. But despite this, its mass is four times bigger than our Sun, and it's 2,500 light years closer to Earth than the next nearest black hole. Eh, but don't worry. For people, the distance of 1,000 light years is unreachable. For example, if we were to make a model where the Earth's distance to the Sun was only 0.05 inches, you would have to travel about 4 miles to get to this black hole. But our galaxy, the Milky Way, is about 100,000 light years wide. So the distance of 1,011 light years doesn't seem that long in comparison. But before you jump inside this black giant, let me try to discourage you. A black hole is a place in space-time where nothing can leave its orbit. No particles, electromagnetic radiation, or even photons of light can escape from a black hole. So you should understand that a journey to such a dangerous object as a black hole is a one-way ticket. And the way black holes are born is incredible. When a star runs out of fuel, the star collapses under its own weight and becomes a black hole, like the supermassive black hole in the Messier 87 galaxy. Its mass is 7 billion times bigger than the Sun, and it was discovered by the Event Horizon Telescope in April 2019. Okay, good. I see you've already bought a ticket for a faster-than-light spaceship. Since there's no refunds, and you don't want to lose the money, it's time to get ready for the trip. Oh, feel free to leave your luggage at home. 3, 2, 1, off you go! You're leaving Earth's orbit, saying goodbye to the Moon, and don't forget to cheer up Pluto by saying it is big enough to be a planet. Then you pass the highway of dark space, and here's your stop, the black hole. Put on your suit, because you're going into outer space. The first thing you see is the event horizon. The gravitational field of a black hole bends the light around its edges, so the event horizon is like a croissant for the observer. Once you reach the event horizon, though, you won't be able to get back out. You may also notice that there's some kind of chaos in this ring. Some lights move in different directions. This happens because you get a mirror effect. But we still don't know what's inside the black hole. So you decide to send in a drone first. The gravity field of the black hole quickly draws in your metal buddy. As soon as he enters the event horizon, his body begins to change its shape. It becomes elongated like a strand of spaghetti. And the closer it gets to the center of the black hole, the longer it becomes. You also notice the drone has slowed its movement and now gradually approaches the black hole center. This is another effect of this space monster. The black hole's vast mass curves not only space, but also time. If you hang one watch next to a black hole and another on the wall in your bedroom, you will see that in the first watch, the second hand has barely moved, while a whole day has passed on Earth. And the more massive the black hole, the stronger the effect of slowing time. Theoretically, if you have a spaceship that can overcome the gravity of a black hole, you can fly to it and wait for a few seconds. During this time, your friends on Earth would live a whole life. Hmm, the flashlight on the head of your drone has turned red. This color change has happened for the same reason. The clocks that are deeper in a gravitational well tick slower when observed from outside. This also affects the photon's wavelength. We see red light because it has the longest wavelength of any color in the visible spectrum. All these things actually happen to the drone in a split second. But it seems slow to you because of the time warp. Alright, it's time to enter the black hole yourself. The final preparation is your suit that will protect you from hawking radiation. This radiation is created by black holes due to quantum effects near the event horizon. Hawking radiation reduces the weight of the black hole. So if the black hole doesn't absorb more mass from nearby objects, it becomes smaller and then simply disappears. Oh yes, the black holes are also mortal. 
but Hawking radiation can turn you into ash, and you'd lose the chance to see the black hole from the inside. Okay, now let's do what you traveled 1,011 light years to do. One big jump, and you're caught in the gravity field of the black hole. This is the point of no return. But your distance allows you to set a stable orbit so that you can spin around the black hole like the moon around the Earth. A little higher, and you'll be thrown into infinity. A little lower, and you will be dragged into the black hole. So, theoretically, planets could exist at this distance. And even inhabited, if there were the necessary conditions. A couple of minutes later, and you are approaching the event horizon. Oh, look down. Your body is so long. You are now spaghetti yourself. Look around you. The stars are turning blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As you fall into a black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths are getting shorter, so the red photons change into blue, and everything starts to look blue. Now, you are right outside the event horizon, and the only thing you can see is a round blue beam of light above you. But soon, you will stop seeing even that. So, you've survived the strong gravitational field of a black hole, and the Hawking radiation didn't burn you to ash. You are now in the heart of the most mysterious object in the universe. You have front row seats, but the view is not that impressive. This is the darkest place you've ever been to. Even the usual laws of physics just stop working here. Theoretically, time goes by so slowly here that your home planet could no longer exist. And a new black hole could appear in place of our sun. But you will live exactly as long as there's enough oxygen in your suit. But what if this cosmic object is actually a wormhole that leads to another place in the universe? This is a popular theory, but scientists still can't confirm it. But if it is true, then after a while, you will see a blue light again. Now you'll experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once you leave the singularity, which means the black hole's heart, you will be in the event horizon. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. You can feel the shaking and warmth from the Hawking radiation. But then you're thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. No one knows what will happen next. Are you in contact with an unknown life form? Or will the conditions there be intolerable for a human being? Or maybe you will not go to another place in space, but to a parallel universe. This theory also exists. According to it, black holes are portals to other dimensions. Simply put, there are endless copies of our universe. Every time you were faced with a choice, your twin from another universe chose something else. But let's leave that to fantastic movies. Right now, the journey into a black hole is merely impossible for humanity. We can't even reach the nearest one. But one day, we will learn more about these space objects' nature. And maybe this knowledge will push humanity forward and make us a multi-galactic civilization. Here's something cool that scientists have discovered recently. Schrodinger's black holes. Yep, the scariest objects in our universe turned out to be even more terrifying. Now, we know that they can also exist in many states at once. But what does it mean? Let's find out. Black holes are mysterious titans of our universe. Sometimes it feels like the more we learn about them, the less we know. We discovered them quite recently, in the 20th century. And since then, we've been finding various black holes all over the universe. Their sizes range from the size of a small town to horrifyingly unimaginable. But their most important feature is probably their huge mass. And that's where a recent study comes to play. Scientists have discovered that black holes have very unusual quantum properties. They found out that each black hole can be both large and small, light and heavy, no longer living and alive. Well, maybe except for the last part. Let's hope that there aren't actually any living black holes. That would be great. But the main point of the discovery is that each black hole can be in all possible states at the same time. It sounds weird, doesn't it? What is it actually supposed to mean? 
Well, the ability to be everything at the same time isn't a new concept in science. This is what physicists call a superposition, or to put it simply, a state of uncertainty. Quantum physicists discovered this first in tiny quantum particles. They noticed a very strange thing. As long as we don't observe a particle, it literally exists in all states at the same time. And only when we start interacting with it, for example, looking at it, measuring it, or just doing something, only then does the particle decide what state it should be in. Here's an example of this. Imagine that you have a ball in a box. You don't know what it looks like, and the thing is, as long as it stays in the box, the ball is all colors at the same time. Only when you take it out of the box does it finally choose one color. All this happens instantly, so you don't notice it. For you, the ball has always been blue. Sounds pretty scary, right? What? And it raises a lot of questions. For example, how do these particles understand that we're observing them? Hmm. How do they decide which state to be in? And what does our world really look like if we only see what is shown to us? Of course, this discovery caused a huge stir in the scientific community. No wonder, it does sound a bit unusual. That's what physicist Erwin Schrödinger also thought at the beginning of the 20th century. The ideas of quantum theories seemed delusional to him. That's why he decided to challenge them. He conducted a famous experiment. You've probably heard about it, what? even if you don't know anything about science at all. Yep, the infamous experiment with Schrodinger's cat. So, what was the point of the experiment? First of all, we have a box and a cat. In the box, there's a container with toxic gas and a special mechanism. Every hour, there's a 50% chance that this mechanism will either open the gas container or not. If it happens, the poisonous gas will be released and the poor cat won't make it. If this doesn't happen, the cat will remain alive and well. Don't worry, this was a purely hypothetical experiment. No cats were harmed in the process. But let's imagine that we did lock a cat in a box and waited for an hour. It's time to check the result. And here's where we get close to the most interesting part. How do you think this situation would end in our regular world? Well, probably within an hour, the container would either open or not. And that would be the moment sealing the cat's fate. After that, we'd just need to open the lid to find out the answer. But in quantum physics, everything is much stranger. According to it, until we open the box, the cat inside would be both alive and not alive at the same time. In other words, the universe itself doesn't know what to do with this cat. As if the poor animal is on the verge of two worlds inside the box. And when you open the lid, the universe will select a random result of the experiment. So why do we do all this to a poor kitty? Well, initially, Erwin Schrödinger wanted to show how stupid it all sounded. But then, he accidentally proved that quantum physicists were right. The situation turned out to be pretty funny. It went like this. Ha ha ha, these quantum physicists have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> According to their logic, the cat in my box should be both alive and not alive at the same time. Wait, hold on. Uh-oh. They're right. Schrodinger received the Nobel Prize in 1933, even though it wasn't for this discovery. And in 2022, three more scientists received the Nobel Prize for another discovery in this field. Thank you. These scientists were Alan Aspect, John F. Clauser, and Anton Zeilinger. They got it for their experiments that involved entangled quantum states. What does all this tell us? Guess now we'll have to look for explanations in some kind of quantum mechanical magic. Unfortunately, humanity isn't developed well enough to test any of these theories, yet. But we have many cool assumptions. For example, the theory of parallel universes is one of the attempts to explain this phenomenon. Remember that ball in the box? Basically, according to the theory of the multiverse, there is an infinite number of different realities. So, if you don't know what the ball looks like, it kind of exists in this interdimensional, uncertain state. But when you open the box and look at the ball, you get transported to a random reality. For example, to the one where it's blue. It sounds pretty incredible, 
but still exciting. Alright, but why do we need all this info now? Why is it connected to the recent discovery? You see, scientists thought, if teeny tiny particles in our universe behave like this, then what about some giant space objects? And so, they decided to direct their devices not into the microcosm, but into distant space. American and Israeli theoretical physicist Jacob Bakkenstein was the first to suggest that black holes may have the same weird properties, but this theory had to be tested. The research itself was aimed at finding a connection between quantum particles and black holes. The researchers created a computer structure in which they placed a simulated quantum particle directly outside a giant simulated black hole. And in the end, this analysis showed that, yep, black holes could also exist in several states at once. For example, they can be incredibly massive and at the same time have no mass at all. And each of these mysterious space gates can have several masses at the same time. The modeling showed that these superimposed masses were, in fact, in certain determined bands or ratios, as predicted by Bakkenstein said the physicist Magdalena Zeich, referring to the study. It's not really clear yet what it all means, and this discovery alone hasn't brought us much closer to understanding how our universe works, or what happens inside black holes. We have realized only one thing. Everything around us is much more complicated and more fantastic than we think. Who knows, maybe black holes are portals between these parallel universes. At this stage, it's impossible to disprove this. In other words, the universe has once again shown us that it is stranger and more mysterious and fascinating than we could imagine. Let's hope that in the future, we'll be able to understand at least a bit of what's going on in it. Now, did you know that there's an astronomical object in which space and time actually swap places? How does that work? And what exactly does swapping space and time mean? Well, let's figure it out. Imagine that you're on a spacecraft. The vehicle can only move straight. Your path leads to some inevitable point, and you have no idea what lies ahead. You can only hope that it won't be too bad. Meanwhile, everything around you is complete madness. A chaotic collage of many historical events. What do you see? Ancient humans and dinosaurs? The birth of the universe? A uh, future? Who knows? That's what the universe would look like if we swapped time and space. And theoretically, this is what you would see if you fell into a black hole and somehow were able to survive. But how is something like this even possible? First of all, let's discuss time and space. Imagine drawing a light bulb on a sheet of paper. Then grab one more sheet and draw how it lit up. Right now, it's just a small circle of light. Another sheet? The circle of light is growing. It gets bigger and bigger in size, until finally, it turns into a giant circle. In real life, the bulb lights up in the blink of an eye. That's because the speed of light is the fastest in the universe. But here, on our drawings, we capture the propagation of light frame by frame. We see how, over time, the light has grown from a small dot to a large circle. But if you connect these circles, doesn't it remind you of some shape? For example, a cone? Yes, exactly! This is called a light cone, and time is the central axis of this cone. Why? Because light turns from a small dot into a large circle over time. To remember it, let's draw a time vector, an arrow inside the cone. It goes from the past to the future. Meanwhile, the circles are space. In space, we can move however we want, in any direction. We can move up or down, in zigzags, and so on. But no matter what zigzags we draw, along the timeline, we're always moving forward. We can't turn back in time, and we can't stop it. This helps us define time and space. Time is the direction in which the light cone is oriented. This is the direction where all our paths lead, and where our future inevitably lies. And space is the whole variety of directions perpendicular to the timeline. This is a straightforward graph. If it could be applied to the entire universe, then time would flow the same everywhere. 
However, if you've watched at least some popular sci-fi movies, you know that this isn't the case. In reality, time can be crazy. For example, if you're chilling near a black hole, what will be two hours for you may turn out to be 20 years for your friend on Earth. But why? Well, take a deep breath. Now, gravity comes into play. Oh, I know about gravity. It's that thing that helps me to stand on the ground, you may think. But it's much, much more complicated than that. Gravity is one of the basic physical forces in our world, and it's incredibly powerful. In fact, she's such a girl boss that she can distort space and time. She can literally influence the speed of time like an almighty wizard. How? Well, let's take something slightly bigger than a light bulb. For example, a supernova. (laughs) Somewhere in the universe, a star has just made a boom. How do we know about it? Well, nothing in the universe, no sound, no radio waves, nothing, travels faster than light. So we'll know about the birth of a supernova only when we see it. And this will happen only when its light cone grows enough and reaches our planet. So the light cone grows and grows. So far, everything is fine. And finally, it reaches our planet. But there's a catch. You see, our planet is very massive, very massive, and it has pretty strong gravity. What happens then? Gravity changes the direction of the light cone. It begins to attract the cone to the center of our planet. And with it, it also attracts our arrow of time. That means it slows the time down. And the closer the light cone is to us, the more the arrow bends and the slower time goes. What does it mean? Well, for example, the fact that the watch on your ankle will lag behind the watch on your wrist, that your head is aging faster than your legs, and that astronauts in Earth's orbit age a little slower than people on Earth. This is what scientists call general relativity. Right. But how does this relate to our topic? How can we understand what will happen if we swap space and time? Nah, don't worry, we're almost there. Now, imagine a cosmic body with incredibly strong gravity. It bends time and space so much that it feels like they swap. This is a black hole. A black hole attracts absolutely everything to its center. No stars, planets, no light can escape from there. Let's say our light cone is approaching it. First, as usual, time begins to bend toward the center of the black hole, attracted by its gravity. But the gravity is very strong, so it bends more and more, and time goes slower and slower the closer you're to the center. In the end, the light cone crosses the boundary of the black hole, the so-called event horizon. At this point, it gets so distorted that now it's literally pointing downwards. We can say that time has changed its direction. Time is pointing downwards. What kind of nonsense is that, you may ask? It'll be easier to explain in a real example. Imagine you're a crazy astronaut who decided to jump into a black hole. And there's an observer in the spaceship who watches you doing this for some reason. At first, for you, nothing changes. You look at your watch, you see that five minutes have passed, and everything's okay. But for the observer, First of all, you'll fall for a very long time. The observer has been sitting there for 50 years, and you're still falling. All because your time has slowed down. Secondly, since space is also distorted near the black hole, the observer will see how you'll begin to stretch like spaghetti. This is a scientific term, by the way. It's called spaghettification. And then you finally cross the event horizon. The observer doesn't see you anymore. Light cannot escape from a black hole, so your image won't reach the observer even if you're still inside. And what about you? What if you somehow survived? Remember, the time arrow is pointing to the center of the black hole. What does it mean? It means that now, the center of the black hole is your future. It isn't a place, it's a fate that you can't change. And wherever you came from, as well as the rest of the universe, no longer exists for you. Because now, it's not a place, but an event from the past. And since you can't turn back time, you'll never be able to come back. But what is around you? Complete chaos. The rays of light now move in all directions, forward, backward, and so on. The rays depicting the events of the past, the future, the present, all this is moving around you. In reality, space and time didn't swap places, but it feels like they did. 
because in space, you can now only move forward, as if along a straight line. And time, reflected in the light rays, surrounds you everywhere and moves in all possible directions. And here we go back to the beginning. This horrifying example helps us imagine what it would feel like if time and space got reversed. Of course, all this is just theories and guesses. The very idea that we're moving in some one direction, the one we haven't chosen, and there's complete time chaos around, sounds quite frightening. And yet, it would be a very interesting experience. Sounds dangerous. Mm, Why don't you go first? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.